So today I'm here at what was the Bob Street, Murphy Street fire that was in Bendigo during this black summer, so 2019-2020 fire season. So I'm around what would have been the point of origin for this um, Bob Street, Murphy Street fire. It's all being cleared now in the black up, mop out stage that was done by FFMB, Forest Fire Management Victoria. So it's all cleared up here. And that looks like they've done some good work by putting in some dams and helping with water erosion and water conservation, etc. Um, this fire is probably one of the closest fires or major ones that there has been to Bendigo in recent years, even probably this one might be as close as what the Black Saturday one was, the Maiden Gully wire. Um, but now, um, but now we've got these lovely dams of water that have been put in during the blackout mop-up stage. So we've got a few dams here, which is really nice to see. Um, so just going back the other way, we've got the train line. The other side of that is Bob Street, and. Right up the end here where we're going to go is what was Mur or what is Murphy Street. So it was known as the Bob Street Murphy Street fire. So there's still plenty of remains like this tree that got burnt, but it looks like they might have been hoping it might come back, but it hasn't really. Um, oh, so some of the plants are starting to come back with all the grasses here. Like this beautiful grass, you can see that it did get burnt, it has come back. Um, sadly, this fire was durably lit, which is really wrong, and actually got relit quite a few times after the initial main fire. Um, when this fire came through, I believe it was on a very high fire day. Um, so the fire actually started off fairly tame and then we had a bit of a wind change come through and it became quite big. I believe about the first 20 minutes of the fire it didn't make it much bigger than the area that I've just walked now. But soon after the wind change it absolutely went up this creek really quite rapidly. So this fire was within Benio CFA's area so they were first to respond um, in the end there ended up being well over 20 trucks here as well as other support vehicles um, and and ended up being with two helicopters here helitax which dropped water as well as a uh, air attack supervisor which is the one that looks after the air and another spotting aircraft so it ended up being four aircraft in total and a very stretching time when there wasn't much aviation resources not in use at the state at that point in time. Um, there was also a strike team for this event also, which is another fire trucks which come from outside sort of the normal area, as in outside the venue area, I believe. They were from the Castlemaine area. Um, and I believe sort of the airport area also had another strike team step up to the kangaroo flat area here in Benio so that there was still coverage at the time because it is a bit of a hit. These grasses are doing very well coming back here. So that squeaking noise is from one of the industries which isn't very far away. So there's industries on all sides. There's another one here up further and then there's houses on the other side of the railway line. So if I continue walking up here, you'll see this is a big gully, which has got a nice uh, rail trail walking path on the side, which is what I came down. This, this fire took many hours for it to be sort of at a stage where it really stopped spreading because it also spotted a few streets over that way um, to a street called Riley Street. Um, 
where a couple of fences and other uh, a couple of fences and a couple of front yards had a little bit of ember attack happen to them, um, which wasn't very good. But that's what happens during this fire. Oh, have a look at these beautiful flowers coming out. Aren't they just stunning? They're beautiful. So as you can see, the vegetation is coming back here. Maybe not all the big shrubs, but they'll come back in time because you really need to sort of hold the water in the area for the water plants to sort of come back. Once you've got them, then you'll start to build up more shrubbery, etc. That's what will come back in the end. Um, so down here, most of it got cleared. I don't exactly know why this area mostly got cleared with the shrubbery and up further, which is what we're about to go into, didn't. But my guess is it's probably something to do with more, it's a flatter area and more to help retain water. Um, not exactly too sure. So here's some more grasses that are all coming back, which are really quite nice. Through. So they're just beautiful, the grasses, they're nice to have a feel of. So it's good to see the vegetation coming back. So it looks like most of this area got blacked out. It looks like there's a fair bit here in between these grasses that didn't get blacked out. I can really feel it walking along because my feet have sunk in and I've really got dust coming up, so it's really burnt really quite deep. I doubt whether this actually got properly blacked out, but the rain since, um, I would say it's done its job. So what's known as blacking out is, so there's multiple different stages to the fire. The first one is sort of when it gets called in, so there's the responding stage to it. Um, then there is the next stage, which is you arrive on scene, you've got an out of control, so that becomes a not yet under control fire. So then you'll get it under control. And what's meant by under control is the fire is well and truly not out, but it stops spreading. So they've limited the spread. They've got containment lines in place to help stop the spread. So by the looks of it, right here, you can see coming along, would have been the first trial of the um, mineral earth containment line. The fire has jumped this one. You'll see one up further where it got put in and it got successfully stopped, the fire. So that's sort of the first couple of stages. So you've got under control and then you have what's known as sort of the blacking out stage, which really isn't publicly out there, which is where you find anything that's still burning. So within all this ground here, um, you sort of want to put out anything that's burning so I can tell anywhere that's white um, really didn't get blacked out here which doesn't surprise me because there's really hard access to get here there really isn't any access to come in too well um, yeah so blacking out can go on for, depending on the size of the fire weeks if not months the other one that happened here in Benio which was a major one was the Huntley fire um, that fire is still getting blacked out now as we speak and that's months old so that's burning deep inside some tree bases which is quite scary but it's still going at least they're keeping an eye on it and maintaining it uh, who knows what that is I'll continue over here to this lovely tree that's regrowth happening on it so you can see this whole area is actually starting to come back with life. Like we've got nice little grasses growing back and everything like that. So the more those sort of things happen, the better it is for the area to regrow. Even this tree coming back out is really good for the whole ecosystem in this area. So the thing that people have is this fire was really bad for the area, but no, some of these plants actually do need fire to be able to regenerate. So it's actually not a bad thing. It's just 
something that needs to happen, but it doesn't need to happen on days where it can really take off and can impact um, our human lives, the best way to put it. So that was what was happening on this day, as in it was a rapidly changing situation, particularly with spot fires. That is always scary because you don't know where they're gonna go and how far they're gonna travel. Like the um, Riley Street, probably 400 meters away and it's spotted to there. There really wasn't exactly a lot of winds. It's probably about as much as what there is right now, which you can, hopefully you can still hear me. So as I continue up the gallery here, I might try and jump over. This track here that's in now was not in during the fire. I believe it got put in afterwards for working out purposes to try and get more access because every time you run out of water, you've got to pack up your hoses and go and fill up and then come back. And doing that takes a lot of time. So the less hose you have to run, the less pack up time there is. So you can see all these scrubs haven't come back, but there's still plenty of ecosystem because all the shrubs that are just up here on the other side of this containment, mineral earth containment line that got put in are all still going and still very well shrubbed for all the wildlife. So coming down from the side here, comes down into the gully here, crosses through and comes out was a mineral containment line that got put in. So my understanding is fire tracks were sitting on this and they use this as a fallback position to be able to try and help stop these flames from jumping this line. So that's what helped stopped it from spreading into the shrub. So if you can see these shrubs here, they were very thick and makes it very hard for firefighting. Um, so it's also reduced the risk of other fires in the area now that that's been reduced from very thick to a thin area. So that's, so that is most of the Murphy Street Bob Street fire that I've just walked. There is the spot fires and it did go into this business here with the gates. Um, you might be able to see it from here, sort of dead centre shot. Uh, there's a couple of dead trees. That's where the spot fire went to. So it spotted a bit of a distance away. That was picked up from my understanding by the helicopters dropping water over there because they could see what was happening. So this is one of the fires that are getting countered towards Black Summer here in Australia, 2019, 2020 fire season.